Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brennan Fies from TutorCheckIt.com and welcome to another Tutorial tu Tuesday. No, wait a second. It's not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. Almost Thursday. Holy crap, we have been slacking. Jeez. Whew. So, um, shoot. Where do I even start? Um, I don't know. Uh, for those of you that have been wondering, like, where we've been for the last, like, week or two in terms of videos... Uh, I know we haven't released anything, and that's because, well, school's been kicking our butts. We've just had so much work to do, and we've also been working on some, like, other video projects that we haven't been able to release yet that have ended up taking a lot more time than we originally thought they would. And, um, I don't know, we've just been having so much on our platter to do that we just haven't been able to get back into our regular routine. So we apologize for that. But uh, if you still love us and you want to show your support, then you can still like the video and, you know, favorite or share it with others and all this stuff. Just to show your support and, <laughs> and you know, show us that you're glad that we're still, you know, trying to our best to make tutorials for you and all that. And uh, today's tutorial is actually pretty cool. But uh, before I go into it, I should mention that I kind of snuck into Eli's house to make this tutorial because, I don't know, I just like his recording setup better. And so... I think I should try and hurry through this as quick as possible so that he doesn't just stumble in in the middle of the tutorial. <laughs> so uh, what we're going over today is an effect that you might have seen before on PSD Tuts. It's this uh, this glowing text, uh, I don't know, it's just a glowing text effect with some like grid-like patterns on, on the floor and some reflections and stuff. And uh, this effect is pretty easy to do, so I'm not going to... Uh, put a whole lot of detail into everything I say. I'm just going to kind of go through it all because it's very simple to do if you're experienced with Photoshop. Like, if you know how to mask and how to duplicate layers, then you're pretty much set to go. <laughs> okay. So, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial, shall we? So, let's make our new document. And we'll go with our 1920 by 1080 resolution because we like that stuff. And let's just go ahead and name the, the document uh, Glowing Things without the capital H, of course. There we go. And right now I have this set as a white background, but I'm going to invert that into a black background by hitting Control or Command I. And let's go ahead and double click the background layer and rename that BG for background. And let's add a gradient overlay to our BG here. And let's set the opacity to about, uh, let's say 28%, and then we will reverse that so we have a nice gray to black gradient right here. And then we'll hit OK. And we'll close up the effects there. And now let's go to Layer. We'll go to New Fill Layer. And we'll select Gradients. And for the name of this gradient, we'll call it Color. And for the mode, we're going to set that to Color. So, you know, it kind of reciprocates the name of the mode there. <laughs> and so for the gradient, um, you can use whatever sets of uh, colors that you want. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to click this blue, red to yellow gradient. And you don't really see this too much, but I'm going to change this last color to green just for the fun of it. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And uh, that's just fine as it is. And we'll just set the fill down to like 35% on that. Just so that way it's a little less intense there. So now let's go back and go to layer and go back to new fill layer and add another gradient but this time we're going to call this shadow and we'll hit OK and for the gradient on this uh, we'll, we'll keep it as a, a black to black gradient here so if it if it changes from white to white just make sure it's set to black and we're going to bring forward this black uh, slider up top for the opacity to 20 percent and we'll hit OK and we'll change the style to radial and then we'll change the angle to 38. And then the scale, we'll change that to 150. That's a number that's compatible on CS5, CS6, and all the other vo versions of Photoshop. So you should be okay on that. And then we'll toggle reverse. So now we've got this nice, beautiful shadow going around the edges there. And so we'll hit OK. And so now we want to go ahead and start adding in our text. So let's grab our text tool. And we'll click somewhere in the upper middle area over here. And I'm just going to start off with the Arial font with the style set to regular at 600 points. And the, uh, the font color is set to black. So I'll type in the letter G. And I'll position this a little more uh, top center there. And we'll commit that. 
And for this, all we're going to do, we're going to change the fill to 0%. Then we'll go to Effects, and we'll add an Outer Glow. And for the Blend Mode, we'll set that to Color Dodge with the Opacity at 40%, and we'll set the color to white. And if you want to, you can also set the size to like 70 pixels or something around that general area so you have a nice soft glow going on. And then we'll change the, the stroke here by adding the stroke and we'll change the color to white. We'll set the blend mode to color dodge with an opacity of let's say 55%. And then we'll just nudge down the size to 2 pixels rather than 3 pixels. And then we'll hit OK. So what we're going to be doing with this is uh, pretty straightforward, but a little time consuming. So we're going to be making a bunch of duplicates of this letter G, but we're also going to be changing up the, the font of the G. So that way we get a little bit of variation. So to start off, let's put the letter G into a group by hitting control G or command G if you're on a Mac and we'll rename this group G. Wow. There's so many G's going on here. <laughs> Okay, so let's select the G layer here, and let's go ahead and duplicate that with Control J, or Command J if you're on a Mac, and we'll change the font to uh, something just a little further down the list. So let's try this uh, this Calibri. Uh, that's looking pretty good. So let's bring up the Transform tool by hitting Control T or Command T if you're on a Mac, and then just click and drag on the edges here until the uh, the font just kind of matches up better with the existing text that's already going on here. And so once you've got that, just go ahead and duplicate it again. Change the font again to something that's just a little further down the list. You can take as much time as you want to do that, but I'm certain that no one wants to take like a half hour in doing so. And some of these fonts are a little weird in terms of the, the positioning of the box. So anyway, you're just going to go through and you're going to make all of these duplicates of your letter until you have roughly 10 different variations of that letter. So I'm just going to go through until I have 10 different letter G's. Me down, but I'm back up. Better back up. I'm off Jack Daniels and Jack Hair. I'm jacked up. You're a jackass who can't make puns or land stunts. In junior high, I got ganged the bone. In my ass beat every damn lunch. Bullies were there to harass me. And I took every damn punch. Limping on a bad knee. On my way to school the next day for a repeat. The nurse would phone home. Like E.T. I told my mom I fell and I doubt she believed me. I'm all bruised up from when I got jumped and my side swelled up from when one of them need me. All right, so I've successfully finished uh, going through and duplicating the G until there's 10 of them, and I changed up the font until they were all a little bit different. And so that just finishes the first letter here. And so now what we'll do is we'll grab our move tool over here on the left-hand side, and let's just go ahead and close up the G group over here, and we'll just move all these off to the left so that way we have a little more room for the rest of our text going on over here. And then we'll just go ahead and hold the Alt key since I'm on a PC. It would be the Option key if you're on a Mac. And we'll click and drag this all the way over here while holding the Shift key. So that way we have a nice little set of duplicates going on. And so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and change every single one of these Gs in this duplicated group into Ls. Now... Uh, some of you are probably thinking that this is going to suck, but there's actually a really quick way to go about doing this. If you look to the left of the name of the layer, in this case it's G, you'll see this T for text. If you give that a double click, it will automatically select the text in that layer. And then you can simply just push the letter L, and it'll change that to an L. And then you can just double click the next one, hit the letter L, double click the next one, L, double click, L, double click, L, and just go through until every single one of these is the letter L. And then you can uh, finish off by hitting that little check mark at the very top. And there you go. You have all of the letters for that group finished. Now, if you want to go through and mess with the, the size and the orientation of the letter, you can feel free to do that on your own time. Right now, I'm just going to keep it simple. Go back and duplicate this set of text. So that way I can get on to the next letter, which is the letter O. Okay, so just really quickly went through and changed all of those into the letter O. 
And I'll just go ahead and move this over a little bit so that way some of the letters are a little bit closer together and maybe just kind of, I don't know, just kind of mix things up a little bit. And uh, everything looks pretty centered, so I'll just go ahead and move on to the next part and make a nice little glowing line underneath the text. So I'm going to select the shadow adjustment layer right here and make a new layer above it and we'll call this glowing line or something else if you so choose. And of course, I forgot to take off the caps lock. <laughs> so glowing line. And for this, all we're going to do is uh, grab our elliptical marquee tool over here. And let's bring up our rulers by hitting Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac. And we'll just click and drag a vertical ruler to the center of the document. You'll know it when it hits the middle because it's going to snap there for you. And then I'll just go to the bottom of the text, click and drag to the right or the left depending on which side you prefer while holding the Alt key so we have a ellipse coming from the center there. And I'll just make it roughly the same width as the text and make it relatively uh, slim there. And so since I have white as my background color, I can fill in this ellipse uh, this elliptical marque by hitting control backspace. That would be command delete if you're on a Mac. And I'll just deselect that with control D. And now we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And with that set to a radius of about 10, hit OK. Then we'll go back to Gaussian blur, or sorry, not Gaussian blur, we'll add a motion blur. And we'll just have that set to an angle of zero with the distance somewhere between two and 300, doesn't really matter. And we'll hit OK. Let's go ahead and set the blend mode to color dodge with a fill of, let's just say, 85%. You can mess with that as you so choose. And actually, I might slim this up a little bit. There we go. Much better. So now let's go ahead and add in the grid that we saw in the example. So to do this, let's make a new document. And we'll set this to, uh, not 50, let's do 100 pixels by 100 pixels and hit OK. And if you have a white background, just go ahead and invert that by hitting Control i or Command-I if you're on a Mac. And let's double-click that background layer and hit OK. And for this, we'll just add an effects. Let's do a stroke. And for that, we'll set the color to white. Then we'll set the size to 1 and set the position to the inside rather than the outside. And so now we've got this nice little box here. And with that, we'll hit OK. And then we'll right-click the layer zero and click flatten image. And so now with that, we'll go to edit and we'll click define pattern. And for this, you can just name it whatever. I'll just call it grid and hit okay. And so now let's go back to our document over here and let's make a new layer and we'll call this grid and I'll put that below the glowing line. And so let's go grab our rectangular marquee tool and then we'll just drag a box on the lower portion of the document until it reach, <laughs> reach, reaches the lower part of the text right there. And I'll just fill that in with my foreground color by hitting Alt Backspace, or that would be Option Delete if you're on a Mac. And then I'll hit Control D to deselect. And so now let's go ahead and go to Effects and do a Pattern Overlay here. And we'll change that Pattern Overlay to that grid that we just chose a little bit ago. Now if you need to, you can click and drag on the grid to reposition a little bit. But since we have a lot of layers going on, it's going to be a little laggy. So I'll just go ahead and leave it right there and hit OK. And the next thing we need to do is flatten the grid into just sheer pixels rather than a, 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 black, a black part with a pattern overlay, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. We'll just make a new layer. We'll put it below the grid, then we'll select the grid layer and merge down by hitting Control e or Command-E if you happen to be on a Mac. And then we can just rename this to Grid. So now with that, we'll set the blend mode of this to Screen. So that way we can see through the black and just have the text there. And this ruler is kind of getting in the way, so I'll, move or I'll grab my Move tool and I'll just click and drag that off to the side until it goes away. So next up, let's bring up our transform tool while having the grid layer selected by hitting Control T or Command T if you're on a Mac. And let's just zoom out a ways. My computer's starting to lag a little bit here. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to hold the Control key. If you're on a PC, this would be the Command key if you're on a Mac. 
and click and drag one of these corners out and to the right while holding Alt and Shift. So right now I'm holding the Control key, the Alt key, and the Shift key all at the same time. So that'd be Command, Option, and Shift if you're on a Mac. And just click and drag this outwards until it's at a size that just, just looks pretty good to you. So yeah, maybe I'll go a little bit wider to enhance that 3D perspective. And I'll call that good and hit the little check mark up top. And I'll hit Control-0 to zoom back into canvas size. Wow, I'm really going fast here. <laughs> okay, so with the grid layer selected, let's add a layer mask on top of it. And while using our gradient tool with a black to white gradient, let's click and drag from the text down to the bottom of the document to add a nice fade to it. Maybe that was a little too much. So maybe more right around there. There we go, much better. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and tone down the grid opacity to maybe, uh, let's do about 20%. And then let's duplicate the grid by hitting Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And let's see, what are we gonna do here? Let's set the grid copy to color dodge. And then we'll set the opacity to about uh, 65%. And then we'll go back to the original grids mask. And then with our brush tool selected, so hit the letter B to go to that. And make sure you're on a very large and soft brush. And with your foreground color set to black, just kind of erase that center portion of the original original grid there. I'm having issues seeing all what's going on here. Okay, so let's go back to the grid copy and maybe tone down the opacity there. There we go. So, there we go. We've got two different grids going on, and the reason being is so that way we still have the original grid kind of trailing off to the sides but then we also have the grid copy kind of blending in with the overall colors of the, the background over here. So that's the original idea. You can just have one grid if you want. It really doesn't matter too much. It just depends on personal preference. And so next up, let's go ahead and select the G, L, and O groups. And let's duplicate those with Control J and give that a moment to load. <laughs> Lots of layers going on here. So let's go ahead and bring up the transform tool and then right click and hit flip vertical. And then after that's done thinking, it'll flip it for you. And we'll click and drag downwards while holding shift until it matches up with the bottom of the text here. Still lagging a little bit. <laughs> Freaking crazy. So uh, now that that's matched up with the bottom of the text, let's go ahead and change the opacity. Uh, well, actually, no, let's not do the opacity yet. Let's actually group these three groups together again with Control G. Let's just call this Glow Reflection. There we go. And let's change the opacity to, uh, let's just try 20% for the time being, see how it looks. Not too bad. So now let's add a layer mask on top of that. Grab our gradient tool from black to white and click and drag upwards while holding Shift. And there we go. We have a nice fading reflection and let's go ahead and take a look at this beauty all right so that's about all there is to this tutorial it, uh, it's good to be uh, uh, what the heck um brandon you hey little devil what what did what i do are you doing out of your basement i, I wanted to make a tutorial basement. for Get back to your cage but You're the, not supposed to come the out. fans though they're i they're, don't care you have your own computer downstairs the, i don't like it downstairs right. though back to your crevice <sighs> sorry guys i i gotta go i'm in trouble um say goodbye to the fans and just i'm, I'm tired of this i'm trying your guys I, I i gotta go thank you for watching um if if you have a moment like the video support the cause Pray for me. <laughs>